Hello and welcome to the final video of 2020 and uh, as I would like to have done in previous years it's just a, a recap and reflection of the year itself and yeah who'd have thought going back to the 2020 announcement video back in January this is what this is how the year will have turned out um, obviously a lot happened in 2020 uh, both from everyone's personal aspects uh, as well as uh, business aspects etc everything changed nobody could have predicted this year uh, and I think at times we were lucky to have done what we love to do uh, the entertainment that the races gave people as well I think was a nice lift uh, in what was quite a dark and dismal year unfortunately for a lot of people uh, I can say myself that I'm very lucky that I, I wasn't affected too badly uh, I was definitely affected from a business perspective a lot of work had been cancelled but I had to sort of adapt and overcome uh, and change up my strategy and, and, and work super hard when the opportunities were there um, and yeah like I say I'm, I'm not in the worst case scenario whatsoever compared to some people anyways um, yeah going back to the the year itself uh, what a year I mean starting off with um, going through just in chronological chronological order my highlights of the year uh, first one is obviously Bathurst uh, this is also going to feature later in the lows as well uh, but Bathurst was a hell of an experience it was great to get out there especially at the beginning of the year I always find uh, the January time of year, February, you just want it to be summer already. Uh, you have the, the racing withdrawal symptoms. So uh, to jump on a plane, uh, travel halfway around the world to go to a legendary circuit like Bathurst uh, at a legendary event like the 12 hour uh, was very cool to witness firsthand and, and be a part of as well and really be behind the scenes of the, the Vulcan Horse team. Um, it wasn't a good event for the car, for the team, uh, unfortunately so um, I believe that everything happens for a reason uh, and if there was anywhere to make my um, Intercontinental GT Challenge um, debut at, at Bathurst having barely driven the Pirelli tyre at all uh, that, was, that was something I was actually very worried about because um, Bathurst is not exactly a forgiving place that needs a serious amount of commitment um, so yeah to go there with the experience I had would have been pretty tricky uh, so yeah, I kind of think the car not arriving because it didn't come from South Africa the previous year beforehand. Uh, yeah, maybe that was some sort of blessing in disguise anyways. Uh, then obviously the pandemic here. I remember being in Sydney airport, flying home, seeing loads of people with face masks on and thinking, what, what are they doing? Like, surely it can't be that bad. Uh, and then obviously a few months later, face masks are all the rage and <laughs> the, the new normal is, is what I'm describing it as at the moment. Uh, however, um, yeah, the pandemic forced us to adapt and overcome. And one of those uh, challenges was uh, eSports. Obviously it absolutely exploded. Um, the DNLS Championship, the digital Nürburgring Langstrecken Series Championship uh, replaced the original uh, real life championship uh, on the exact same date, um, just on a digital format. What I think the DNLS did really right was the mixture of pro and am drivers and uh, sim racing experts that probably describe. Um, the pro driver will do the qualifying, the real life pro driver, sorry, will do the qualifying and the race itself, with then the sim drivers taking over after the first stint. So the, uh, the pro driver, the pro real life driver had to do uh, a minimum of, I believe it was 45 minutes or uh, six or seven laps. Uh, and that made for, I think, a really good uh, competition between us pro drivers. And yeah, we're just always chasing the, the sim racing drivers because they're just on such a ridiculous level. However, I put so much time and effort into sim racing. Uh, I really loved it, I really enjoyed it. And the highlight was uh, getting a podium in the third race of the DNLS series. Well done, guys. Yes, boys! <laughs> yes, boys! <laughs> Go, Sam. Mega job, Sam. Well done. Uh, with my teammates Scott and Sam Michaels who I can't thank enough for all their help and support and patience as well uh, because yeah boy did they need it with some of the mistakes I uh, ended up making during the year and there's David Pittard was it Pittard yeah, that what? had the original problem yes it was Pittard that had the original problem and then was picked up as he came back onto the 
onto the track so that was David Pittard who was running very very well for Falcon Horse Motorsports it's in racing so uh, and it was really fun actually um, I haven't had access to a sim for a little while now and I'm, I'm really getting uh, withdrawal symptoms especially now it's the winter period uh, yeah I just want to drive and get out of the sim so I can't wait to get that from the UK to Germany and uh, yeah get on it as soon as I can however after the, the um, lockdown lifted um, we went to Gilsterberg with Vulcan Horse and yes yeah, starting the off, the off the year with a new lap record at the Gilsterberg circuit my first time at the track and it's a brilliant track I mean yeah if you get the chance definitely definitely go there's so much undulation um, it's a very tricky track it's not just flat and boring there's so many little bumps and jumps and blind corners that it really uh, tests your nerve and uh, test your skills and abilities as a driver so yeah really really fun track definitely hope to be going back there in 2021 uh, but yeah if you get the chance definitely definitely go uh, yeah and it turned out with just shaking the car down was enough to um, uh, set a new lap record GT3 lap record round round the circuit which was uh, a brilliant way to start the year it was so nice to have something uh, good to talk about after such a long period of yeah obviously a little bit of doom and gloom being stuck inside etc um, then straight after that, straight into the first NLS round of the year and starting the year with a win. No better way to come back from everything that's happened. It was pretty much the first race that happened in Europe after lockdown. There was only one race before it, so it kind of felt like all eyes were on us really. But Mikko and I absolutely nailed the race. Uh, and yeah, managed to pull off the win, which was a great way to start the year. And it set the, set the tone for um, the rest of the year. NLS championship wise uh, which obviously went very well as well uh, obviously within that race I did manage to pull off what I think is probably moving of the year at the Nürburgring Pittard im Schwedenkreuz jetzt die Attacke außen rum gegen Mathieu Vaxivier also Seite an Seite der Anflug auf Schwedenkreuz ausgerechnet jetzt stockt da natürlich das Bild Pittard außen rum im Schwedenkreuz jetzt die bessere Linie für das Anbremsen auf die Arenberg Kurve und er geht Outside of Street Bikes, uh, one of the fastest corners on the circuit, top gear, uh, minimum apex speed of about 260 kilometers per hour. Uh, and yeah, I talked through that move uh, and how it all happened uh, in my NLS1 video, so make sure you check that out. Um, then it was a pretty intense schedule after that. All of the championships, all the events have been compressed down into a very short amount of time. Uh, which meant that uh, the NLS season came past really fast. Uh, we managed to pick up four podiums out of five races, which was absolutely awesome for the Horse team. Uh, and, but then, uh, after the final NLS race, um, the 24 hours, and then we went to Indianapolis. Uh, Indianapolis was a mega event. It was a shame that it wasn't more subscribed, but obviously in the situation, it was good to see as many cars as as we had, uh, but yeah, Volkanos absolutely nailed it. I, I managed to get my experience that I needed on the Pirelli tyre in a relatively pressure-free environment because there wasn't 30 other GT3 cars all trying to um, compete at the same time. Uh, I learned a huge amount off of my, my teammate, my BMW factory driver teammates, uh, and yeah, Volkanos managed to pull off the perfect result of a 1-2 result, uh, which was a great way to then start the Intercontinental GT Challenge year and uh, yeah, to start off the Intercontinental uh, Championship with a podium at Indianapolis, that was pretty special. So that was a great weekend. Um, and then finally, uh, accumulating all of that at the end of the year was uh, the NLS Championship. So yeah, as mentioned earlier on in this video, four podiums out of five, um, one win, two second places and a third, uh, and then a final eighth result but we don't talk about that too much uh, it was enough to secure the championship meaning yeah uh, sp9 gt3 champion of the nervo group so from uh, never driving a gt3 car before two and a half years ago to becoming champion of the nervo group uh, that was a very cool uh, and special box to tick uh, first nls win and championship win both ticked in one year uh, i've had pole position i've had fastest lap i've had a race win i've had the championship now there's only one more ambition which is uh, to win the Nervo Ring 24 hours. So I really hope that uh, in the future I can have a competitive package to do that. 
Um, now we're going to touch on some of the lows. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on this too much, but uh, yeah, bar first, as mentioned. The fact that the car didn't arrive for me uh, meant I didn't actually drive the car apart from in my hire car. Um, so yeah, that would have been obviously another amazing um, event to uh, tick off of my list uh, and driven the circuit in a GC3 car. I think that would be pretty daunting. Um, the Nürburgring 24 hours, We'd had such a good run up on the lead up through NLS to the 24 hours that we knew that we were gonna have a super competitive package with a super competitive lineup. Um, in the end, the weather was against us, which I mean, with uh, the, the, the Nürburgring 24 hour weather is bad enough in its normal May time slot, let alone when it gets pushed to uh, the end of uh, September. So, um, yeah, that was a shame. Uh, in the end, we ended up 12th, which was okay. Uh, I think we could have had probably a top 10 uh, had we not had a couple of incidents. Uh, but ultimately, in the wet conditions, we just didn't have the pace, which is a big shame because, yeah, that is such a big event. It's such an amazing race that I, I really want to win there. So it was quite disappointing to come away with that as well. Similarly, uh, similar story to the Spa 24 hours again, uh, with the slightly cooler conditions and it being pushed later in the year. Uh, again, that was quite a difficult result to swallow of having a DNF uh, and sort of running around the top 15. Uh, it's again one of my uh, one of the events I'd love to win. It's one of the events I, I really want to perform well at. And we didn't quite have the pace again, which was which was a shame. It was a pretty testing and trying race. Um, with a couple of incidents, punctures, uh, shunts, one small one and one big one. Um, and yeah, we it wasn't our year that year, unfortunately. Big, the, the main thing is that Martin uh, was okay at the end of it. Uh, and then, yeah, those were the only sort of space, so those low moments. I could be very lucky that they were the only um, yeah, things that I think were uh, disappointing and shame last year. Uh, and then another couple of honourable mentions is obviously as well as on track driving and also driver coaching. Uh, I met some amazing people this year, worked with some amazing people this year. Having moved to Germany sort of in the middle of the year, I was, I was going between the UK and Germany uh, working with uh, new and old customers. Uh, and yeah, some highlights from that is definitely driving a GT3 RS Manti Racing around the Nürburgring. Big shout out to one of my clients who's uh, allowed me to do that, trusted me to do that. It's an amazing car, amazing experience. Um, uh, a, a few of my new German clients from uh, this year. Uh, shout out to Jacko's Paddock who brought me in as their team coach to help out Tassilo and Andreas pick up multiple podiums in the RCN racing series which is at the Nürburgring uh, and also Guido as well who made big improvements um, and I hope that we can work together again in, in the new year to uh, further improve uh, their abilities and grab some more podiums, trophies and championships next year as well. Uh, Bjorn as well did a great job uh, to secure his first race under his belt as a, to become an official racing driver in the new M2CS Racing uh, with Vulcan Horse Motorsport in the RCN as well. Uh, also, shout out to F1 OOV, check him out on Instagram. Uh, he's got a new McLaren uh, 570 GT4 car uh, this year as well and yeah, was super impressed with how he got to grips with the new car and I think the Ginetta that he previously had helped bring his driving style on and yeah, he really nailed it with McLaren so I hope to work with him again in, in the near future. Uh, and uh, and John, John as well, who actually bought the old G55 uh, and we took it to Spa and we had an amazing couple of days at Spa uh, getting him to be flat for a rouge. Uh, with me in the passenger seat, which was a hell of an experience, I'll tell you that. And yeah, the end, the highlight for me was the end of two days uh, driving around with his two um, best track mates, I would say. And um, from from where he was at the beginning of the year to where he was there, it was great to share a pretty much empty spa front of jump circuit uh, and race with them on uh, on track at the end of two mega days, which was great, great fun. So yeah, I hope to definitely do that again uh, in, in 2021 coming as well. Uh, the world keeps changing week by week, it feels like. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see where 
2021 takes takes us i mean there's some cool stuff in the pipeline there's some cool cool stuff being talked about but as in motorsport uh it's not done until you're on the on the track uh, in the car and going out of the garage out onto circuit so nothing's guaranteed basically so uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. It's amazing to have seen the growth of the channel this year. Uh, it's been amazing to have so many people get involved in the channel. I just love sharing what I'm so lucky to do. And uh, it's great that everyone is uh, getting on board with it. Uh, 2021, I hope to grow the channel more, uh, bring you some more cool content. So make sure you stay subscribed, uh, stay liking these videos, stay sharing these videos as well to any petrol head friends that you think would enjoy this. Um, and yeah, until 2021, Happy New Year.